Welcome to my weekly Fabricate Friday video on my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Suzanne, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. Today's video is all about paper crafting. I'm here to share how easy it is to make a 3D project. I also sell the products I feature in this video. I hope you enjoy my free video tutorial and I would love to see you shop with me. Hey everybody, this is the project that I'm going to share with you today. It is a pigment sprinkles holder. I was getting sick of having to go into the box all the time. The box, as you can see, is getting a little worse for wear. So I thought I would make something to hold it. And because I have a wall of color just this way, I figured that I would like to see my sprinkles. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I have a, this is just a, like, a, I don't even know, a board. And I have a, it's like a craft sheet on top. And I have two pieces of cardstock, or sorry, um, watercolor paper. So this one is sized at uh, eight and a half by four. And this one is sized at, six and a half by four and a quarter. I'm going to kind of put them together a little bit, just like that. Um, I'm gonna bring out my sprinkles. And I just have a tiny office size spritz bottle. You could use the spritzers from Stampin' Up. Um, I, I love these. They come out in a lovely fine mist, but there's just not enough water for me. I don't want to keep on going back, especially when I'm doing a project like this. Okay, so I have my Roy G. Biv here, and I am going to start with red. Now, red is a very pigmented color, so I'm going to only do a tiny amount. Plenty. I'm not even going to put any on that side. All right, so this is Mango Melody. Uh, do heavier on the middle part and lighter on the edges because the paper is going to bow unless you tape it down, which I am not. I might go in two or three times with the sprinkles. This is uh, Daffodil Delight. Uh, this always gets washed away. <laughs> this is Granny Apple Green. This is Bermuda Bay, also a heavy duty color, so a little goes a long way. And the probably the most intense color aside from the red is the gorgeous grape, which is I'm working with right now. So just a little bit on the edges here. I most likely will go in a second time with the colors if they're not perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna move these slightly apart from one another. I do have just one of my, I, these are old hair towels, they, they're white. I can bleach them if I want to, I personally don't care. I don't use paper towels in my house because I'm conscious of paper usage because I do do a lot of paper crafting. So all the other things in my life, I'm a little better at. All right, so as you can see here, I'm getting it really saturated. Now, if you wanted to break up some of these pieces of color, you can.
All right, awesome. That's pretty good for the first go. Okay, I'll go in a second time. Actually, I'll dry these first. Okay, so I don't like the way the red looks here. There's, again, nothing here. And I think I could use a little bit more Bermuda Bay. So let's go in and add some more pigment sprinkles. Oh, that's a lot of red. Um, the Bermuda. Some more mango on that edge. And some the green kind of went a little hooky there. All right. Let's see what this does for us. red. As soon as red touches green, it's not, or purple, it's not a good sign. <laughs> but I'm digging this. I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing things. There's a creative way and there's your way. It's fun. It's nice to get messy sometimes. Just cleaning up the edges as best I can. All right, good job. I'm gonna dry it and I'll do one more little trick. So I think I will add some water splotches, which is always a fun technique. They act like bleach on the paint. Isn't that cool? So don't worry if you don't do a fabulous job of blending these colors because that just looks so neat. And they will lighten as I dry. Well, I had fun. Okay, one more last little trick. Before I take these to my scoring board, I'm gonna spritz the back with water. All right, to my scoring board. Okay, for this one, we are going to, this is the eight and a half by four. I'm gonna score at one and seven and a half. 
And then on the short side, one and three. The reason why we spritzed it on the back is just to keep it a little bit more malleable so it doesn't crack. For this one, on the short side, we're going to score at one and two and a half and three and a quarter. Now quickly, while they're still on the dampish side, we're going to score and burnish they are not cracking on me so that's good all right so this one is uh, that first one goes down so that one inch goes down then this one's going to come this way Then this is going to go yeah, the opposite way. So it's, it looks kind of like that. So the one inch piece here is going to go on the inside of the box. All right, let's get to cutting. I put the darkest uh, color, sort of the red and the violet kind of on the ends. So um, if it was going to be too dark, I could kind of hide it. <laughs> And there's no cutting on that one. Okay, so I just need some glue, which I have right here. Liberally with the glue if you have. I don't find that the double-sided adhesive works really well on watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is really um, bossy. It's a bossy paper. So wet glue is probably your best bet. Okay, I'm just gonna fold in and adhere. That looks so cool having it spotty. So this should just fit in like that. Ooh, lovely. Wrong way though. There we go. Should go that way. Try to match up your my rainbow. Okay. So glue on here and then the back here and here. Brings me back to my old mixed media days. I just don't have time for it anymore. Sad. Maybe when I retire. Cool, hey? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip the box apart. <laughs> I'm always famous for that. And I'm going to, maybe I'll bring my little trimmer out. 
People keep on um, have asked me if I have changed the blades. I have not yet. It still cuts pretty well. So I am going to just take my Tombow here. When working with pigment sprinkles, just be careful to use uh, items that are going to protect your surface. Pigment sprinkles do have a tendency of dyeing things like your fingers and your tabletop. So if you're working on a unprotected surface, well, that's just silly because I'm giving you a warning right now. All right, and here we go into the new case. I love it. What do you guys think? How cute, hey? So it is going to sit right on my desk uh, to the side of me, my color wall, I say, because I have all my markers and all my inks and everything over there. I'm going to put this right in front of my re-inkers so that I can grab them and I remember to use them because when I find something on my desk that, um, or visually I'll grab for that if I can see it. If it's tucked away in a box, I might not use it. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, have yourself a great day and I will catch you next time. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. On screen are two more videos for inspiration. Click on the maple leaf for my blog or click on me to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching.